Hi, hi everyone. Welcome to Colette's Thermi Kitchen. My name is Colette Matriga. I'm a Thermomix consultant here in Australia with customers in all states and territories. Now, if you're thinking of getting one of these wonderful machines in your kitchen, please reach out. I'd love to support you, help you get it in the kitchen, help you order one, and then look after you in the years to come when you start having fun with this great machine. Now tonight, what we're actually uh, going to be doing, we are going to be celebrating Burger Day, and Andrew is extremely happy because he loves my burgers, don't you, honey? <laughs> he does indeed. All right, so we're going to kick off, and um, years ago, I remember, you know, um, trying to make the perfect burger and I would be putting all these wonderful things inside to enhance the flavor but I soon learned it's not about what you put inside it's about the meat so my burgers contain basically three things meat salt pepper that's it and I'll tell you more as we go along so the first thing is um, the meat that we're actually using now you've got a number of choices you can go to the supermarket and you can buy minced meat and if you are buying minced meat from the supermarket, you want to make sure that you're not getting the lean one. You want at least 20% fat, um, because that fat is taste, and that's what's going to give you a juicy, tasty burger. So at least 20% fat. So don't go for the lean minced beef. I love to actually mince my own, which many of you know already. Um, I just think you get a better flavor. I know exactly what kind of meat it is. So what I've got here today is basically partly frozen chuck steak. Now chuck steak is, um, how can I best describe that? Okay, this, let's say this is a cow, this is the head. <laughs> chuck steak is the bit that goes around the shoulder behind the neck. Um, so it's a really juicy um, um, cut of meat. Um, it's got good fat in it. So that means it's going to be tasty and it's a perfect one for mincing. Braising steak, that kind of thing, uh, meat is really good for mincing too. Now this is often um, probably more expensive than buying minced meat in the supermarket because you can get some minced meat really cheaply. But you've got to remember this is just chuck steak. That's it. Minced meat, you've got all kinds of stabilizers, colors, you know, preservatives in there. And you know the difference when you cut start to cook with your own mince because you don't get that flood of water coming out in your pan. You actually get really good taste and, and we actually love that. Now mincing in your Thermomix is super, super easy. So with the TM6, what we can actually do is go into what is fast becoming one of my favorite features. I'm going to head into our modes, put my glasses on because I can't see a thing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the, into the, um, chop function. This is a new function that came on a few months ago. So hitting on the chop function. And here we have a whole chart of all different reference things. And I'm going to head towards meat and poultry. And I want to mince up some beef. So I'm going to hit on beef. And up comes my chart. So it's telling me to add partly frozen and uh, meat into the Thermomix bowl. So I'm not quite sure how much I've got here. So Andrew, if you want to keep heading down on here, if you can stretch forward again, um, I need to weigh to see how much I've got. So I'm going to weigh, bring up the scales. Here, here they pop up. And I'm just going to now add in what I've got here. Oh, 330, that's absolutely fine. Now, in terms of the meat, you can see I've left the fat on. I've cut any sinew off because remember sinew is not going to melt down, it's not going to be overly pleasant, but this has got at least 20% fat on there. And the other thing is, it's telling me here it needs to be cut to around 3 centimeters. Now remember, visual guide, if you're like me, that visual guide is really useful. The actual dial of the Thermomix is 4, so we just need to make sure it's just slightly smaller. This is kind of slightly smaller, so in that goes. Excellent. So, lid goes on. So I'm going for the smaller quantity there. Let's put my glasses back on. And you can see now that's green. And all I have to do is press set. And everything is now programmed for me to mince that meat. It's that simple. And um, so all I need to do is going to be a bit loud. Turn this round to speed number eight. <laughs> And my meat should be 
beautifully minced for me. So just to show you what we've actually got, let me just take out some of this. You can see how lovely and minced up that meat is. And you know, the quality of this is just going to be beautiful. And the taste, it's going to be like, like proper steak, you know, it's going to have that lovely flavor to it. So how gorgeous is that? All minced up, beautiful. Thank you, Thermomix. All right. So now to make my burgers, as I said to you, it's a very simple process. I'm just going to take this mat here. What's really important, I'm just going to put my uh, thing on, nice and high. I'm just going to um, take a handful and all I want to do is kind of gently press this in and I'm not using lots of pressure. Now I'm going to talk about my beautiful brioche buns in a moment but I'm just going to take that. Now this burger is going to shrink a little bit so I know that that's roughly the perfect size for what I want and then all I'm going to do is to salt it generously pepper it and I'm just going to gently flip that over and do the other side why don't you put salt and pepper in the bowl and just massage it throughout all the you can I'll do it individually each one um, because that's a great question Andrew um, because the salt helps to crisp up the outside of the actual meat. So that's why we want that here. And I don't want to interfere with this meat too much. That is it, that's one burger done. So I'm gonna grab another one, about the same size. We're off to three tonight. So about 100 grams per burger works about, about right. Okay, so I'm not pressing it down. I'm being really quite gentle with this. That's about right. And exactly the same again. When you think you've got enough salt on it, put more on. Okay, seriously, this is an, an important step for salting. Oh, by the way, you probably know already, these beautiful salt and pepper containers come from the mix shop. I know a lot of you have them already and are enjoying them. And they look absolutely beautiful on the table when you've got people over as well. So, just so handy to actually use. So, third one, a little bit bigger, that can be your one. Andrew likes to have two burgers, <laughs> lots of salt, pepper, flipping it over, okay, and again salt and pepper, but can you see the colour of these versus the colour of what you might actually get when you get it from the shops, it's a bit different, which is, which is good, alright, so that's that, now I just want to check, Whoa, that is smoking, Andy, you've got to keep an eye on what's going on behind for me, alright, now because that pan is so hot, I'm not going to be using olive oil, I'm going to switch to a grapeseed oil because I don't want it to give a burnt flavour. So just about a teaspoon, hot, hot pan. And these burgers are not going to take long at all. Now when these hit that hot pan, what's going to happen, they're going to shrink and as they shrink, they're going to kind of dome up. So we don't want them to dome up. So I'm just going to take my thumbprint and press in the center of each of these a little, little circle. So this will mean that my burgers are going to be nice and flat. So that one goes over straight into that hot pan. Number two. So we want to go for about two minutes. Okay, so we've got a countdown, two minutes. Pop that away. Two minutes. And we're starting to pop them in. Alright. I'm intrigued with this. Are you? All your lovely favourite flavours there, Andrew. All in the same bowl. Now, it's always hard working here with my back to my food. I can't quite see what's going on. Where's, so, where's the onion? Fingers crossed. I'll tell you all in a second. Alright, let's crack on with the next bit. So, the next thing I want to chat to you about are these beauties here. Now these are the Thermomix brioche rolls. I love brioche rolls with a burger because they're so nice. Now brioche is basically an enriched dough, which means it's got extra milk and extra eggs. So it's just going to be delicious. 
Um, all right, so what I'm now going to do is come out of that, go back home, and I'm just going to go to my weekly plan, and I'm going to bring up what I cooked today, these brioche bowl, uh, rolls. And um, basically, Michelle, you not follow... Too, not too high. Thank you. I do want them quite high. I'm going to put the fan on. This I'll turn them down just a little bit. And the other thing I've noticed is I'm not pressing them down. I don't want any juice to come out. I'm just going to pick up. Is it okay? Right. Um, right, back to these lovely brioche bowls. So you basically follow the recipe. They're very, very straightforward. I did keep some dough to one side because the bit that kind of show that everyone kind of gets confused about is what to do with the dough in terms of shaping it. Separated it into individual rolls. These ones weigh about 80 grams and more bigger. 100 grams is a great burger size as well. And then what I did is after I shaped them, I, I then formed the actual dough. And they're very, very simple. So all you do, straight out with your hands, and then you're going to pull into the center. Dangerous working with no flour into the center, and then you're going to turn that over, and you could just leave them at that and if you want to take it to the next level cup your hands over the dough and what you're going to do is you're going to pull that dough nice and tight by giving it a good circle rub so I'm cupping it and, and actually um, putting a bit of pressure on and the, but the bench is kind of pulling it so what I end up with is a, is a lovely round shaped bun this is the same size as these so this is what they actually end up like looking. And then you, you wash the top in um, egg, and then you pop them in the oven for about 20 minutes, and just following the instructions. Okay, we are doing fine. Looking good. All right, so that's the that's dough. But the other thing I want to show you with the TM6, one of the great things, especially if you're not great at cooking, is you can actually go into this and you can, um, so I'm going to go to the next step. So we transfer the dough to a silicon mat and we've got video. So what I just showed you is actually on your Thermomix. There is video tutorials on your Thermomix that show you exactly what to do. So this is about shaping, cutting the dough. Shaping the burger, it's been more than a minute. Yeah, so that's, okay. Oh. Has it been more than a minute? Yeah, two okay. minutes. All right, thank you. So you've got that there to actually show us. So what I'm now going to do with my burger is I'm going to pop on a slice of cheese. cover them and that will probably just go for about another minute or so and we'll be nearly there. All right, so great video tutorials. I know it's a bit all over the place tonight, but there's just so many aspects. All right, so while that's just finishing off, in here, I've got my burger sauce. So I've got a couple of sauces that I love in my burgers. This is my kind of creamy sauce. And what I've got is, and I'll put this recipe up on my blog, I've got a half a cup of uh, mayonnaise, I've got um, two tablespoons of tomato ketchup, 
two tablespoons of basically gherkin relish. I love this stuff. I use it in so many dishes. Um, and two tab and sorry, one tablespoon of American mustard. American mustard is a little bit more vinegary and has a very mild mustard taste, which is quite nice. Why do they make American mustard called Frenchies? No, no, good question. Now to this, I'm also going to add a few um, extra spices. Good. So onion powder, about a quarter of a spoonful. And Are you going to mix it all together? Yeah, garlic powder. These tons of this stuff is great for flavouring. And then um, I want about half a teaspoon of ground paprika. And um, I want a teaspoon of vinegar. So I'll put all this up there because it's a lovely, lovely dish. And then I've just got one shallot which I've actually chopped up really finely. That's also going in. And then I just need a bit of salt. I'm going to check the burgers. About half a teaspoon of salt. Thank you, honey. Looking really good. Yep. Keep them warm, they're just about done. Now, all I need to do is to mix this together. Of course, you can use all this up in the thermomix if you wanted. Now, what, normally, what I would do is I'd pop this into the fridge for a couple of hours before I needed it. What that would have mean is that the onion powder, etc., is all going to dissolve into the actual sauce. So, now what I want to do is just have a quick taste. Oh, yum. This, my mouth is salivating. Is <laughs> <laughs> that good? <laughs> All right, that's, that's so that's great. I must say, it's a secret recipe sauce, but not secret anymore. <laughs> no, no. Wow, that's, that's really matching in the face. Right, so let's um, serve up. Oh. So what I like to do is to grab a burger bun and egg. So I might do this one over here. So not, grab a not, burger. Not, you're not going to toast your buns? Oh, I should do, shouldn't I? I I'm not going to toast this one. Um, you should toast them. I've just forgotten. I normally just toast them in the pan. Um, but just for speed and because we're on here tonight, I won't. So on the toasted bun, what you would actually, well, what I like to put down, this is my, and I'll show you this another night because I need to make some more. This is my tomato relish, which is absolutely lovely. And that goes down. You see, we like our sauces. And then on top of that, I am going to grab some of this beautiful stuff. I'm going to be generous with these sauces. I'm going to need a nice bit of sauce. I'm going to grab a burger. Let's take this over. How naughty does that look? Yeah. You can make yours a little in a moment, then, Joe Rogers. We love our onions for sure. Definitely have to have lots of onions on there. And then a little bit of freshness. So remember guys, when you're doing your lettuce, take your lettuce home, wash them up well, spin them, pop them in whatever container you've got and always pop in a piece of kitchen paper to absorb any moisture. They're gonna last longer. Some nice crispy lettuce. What have I missed, Andy? I feel like I'm Tomato. Missing something. Yeah. Tomato. And a burger, oh, is just there and it's just delicious. <laughs> you want to you wanna wait that, don't you? Well, I know you like the toasted bun. I've got a toasted bun, <laughs> less green All than right. mine. And less green for you. Come on, you got that. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah, I want to see you eat this one. Be, I mean, you know it's going to be good. Um, oh. <laughs> mm. I'm tasting meat. Mm. All about the meat. Tastes like burger. Isn't that good? Yeah. There is no burger you would buy that has that sort of 
that flavour. It's like a steak. It is just like a steak. It's so flavourful. That's that why you want to make your own meat. Hmm. So there you go. Beautiful. I oh, know it looks such a mess. I'll take a pretty picture in a minute. But I can't tell you how good this is. And, you know, you can make your buns. You can do um, pop them in the freezer for when you want to make them so it becomes easy that night. This here, this uh, relish will last a couple of weeks in the fridge in a nice jar. The uh, tomato chutney lasts about a month in the jar. And, um, and then you just mince up your meat um, and off you go. So it could be a really easy one. Um, normally we would cook our... our beef burgers on the barbecue so whichever works for you but tonight I've just done them here so hopefully you found that useful tonight you picked up a few little tips um I think that's it any questions from no no questions I want my burger <laughs> okay that's me for tonight everyone thank you so much for joining me and uh, reach out if I can help in any way looks a bit messy but oh I wish you oh, it's just look at that look at that beautiful thing just delicious and can you see how moist it is yeah I'm going in again.